Hello guys, today we're back with another video. Today we're going to be looking at BitAx and open source miners and why there's a major, major problem with the whole open source kind of mining community right now. It's not necessarily in terms of the community, but on an overall factor, mainly the supply chains of open source miners and where we hit the major bottleneck for a lot of the open source mining. So there's a few open source projects, obviously BitAxe being kind of the biggest one right now. There is NerdAxe and a couple of other things that I've kind of seen around the block. Now BitAxe has been probably the most successful one in terms of like the solo lottery mining, just because it offered a way better hash rate than the original NerdAxe. And then you have people making better iterations on top of it, such as the Super Hex or even the Hex that we see there or the Zyber 8S, which is a kind of high performance version of the BitAxe Super Hex. So a lot of adaptations rolling on from the BitAxe. I think it's kind of opened up a whole new wave of this solo lottery mining and people actually making their own adaptations to these. And then you have things like the Nerdax Q++, which I kind of would say it's like the Super Hex or the Hex with just a little bit of adaptation going onto it. And these are kind of smallish ones that produce a relatively good hash rate, you know, around the three to four range in terms of terahash. And they have a bunch of chips underneath there. I haven't really looked into this Cyber 8S, but this is a very high terahash in terms of an open source miner, or at least a small solo miner. I don't really know how this is made in any adaptation. But it just says here 6.4 running at 140 watts. I don't think they've actually listed the chip on the underside. But you can see it's kind of got the same model as the hex version as well. Maybe it's better cooling and that's where they can push the terahash upwards. So these are all kind of the open source projects that are coming along. We obviously have the Ember one as well, which is coming from the creator of BitAx, Scott. And that's going to have, you know, 12 chips on it. It's going to be way more terahash. And I think it's going to get to a point where we nearly have our own self-sufficient kind of BitAxe open source mining that we can get all the parts. Now, this is the main problem with open sourcing all of this and people creating them is you run into a massive, massive bottleneck in terms of the supply chain with the ASIC chips. So I think the goal moving forward in the future should be to migrate away from Bitmain, regardless of the hash rate that Bitmain actually can produce with their chips. The reason for this is because obviously everyone wants nice hash rate, but it doesn't really matter with solo mining too much as long as you've got a decent efficiency. And I think there should be a migration away from Bitmain to kind of stop the bottlenecks in the supply chain to get more of them out there. Currently what people are doing is they're stripping down these Bitmain miners and they're taking off the chips and putting them into the bit axis to create them. And we don't necessarily want that. We want our own chip that you can just buy singularly instead of having to buy one of these and then strip it down. You know, some of them you might lose chips and it also adds to the labor having to strip down an ASIC miner for the chips. And that's gonna add extra cost to the bit axe. Now I have done maybe the quickest amount of research for this and it says you can buy one off Alibaba or AliExpress. I personally wouldn't buy one from there. It just seems like it's kind of might not actually be the chip. I'm not to say that they're not good, but, but it does seem like there's different pictures even here of the chips. They look different to what they are down there. Personally, I wouldn't really go for anything off here the main source that you'd get them from probably would be stripping down one of the ASICs that you see here. So I know that a lot of people have bought the ASICs and then stripped them down, but you can see it gets very expensive if you want to make a gamma, for example, because you have 4,422. I know you get a lot of chips from there, but you still have to buy it, get it shipped out, strip it down, and then actually make the bit ax off the back of that. The only problem is that Bitmain do produce very efficient chips and you can kind of see this in the list here. So it's sorted by efficiency and you can see that the S21, basically all the versions of it right there are the most efficient ones. And then below that you obviously have the BitAx and those are kind of comparable in terms of the efficiency as well. 
I believe that they came from the S21 XP or it might have been the S21 Pro, but you're getting around 14 joules per terahash on one of these. So it's slightly less efficient than the S21 XP that you see here. As I said, with BitAx or solo mining, I don't really feel like people are too worried about efficiency. They just want hash rate and having one singular chip and being able to make adaptations to that. For example, better fans, better heat sinks, and even being able to overclock it a little bit more allows you to push the hash rate and people aren't too worried about efficiency. So in the future, I think we should see a migration over to different ASIC chips. We do have some kind of variations that we can go for. There's a BitDia one here. I personally have never heard of it. And then there's an Auradyne one here, which I've never heard of either. The one that we'd probably go for next if people are making adaptations is MicroBT. So they have kind of a comparable amount of efficiency. Bitmain kind of always wins in terms of the efficiency. They're always just that slight bit ahead, but MicroBT still produce very efficient chips in the grand scheme of things. And then if you go down, you have Avalon, which have kind of been trailing behind for quite a while. You can see that this one came out in December 2024. The efficiency isn't great, I would say. If you scroll down, that's comparable to S19 XP Hydro, around 19 joules per terahash. But you can even see here this micro bit, the newest one that they brought out in December 2024, is about comparable to something that Bitmain brought out maybe a year earlier or a year previous in February 2024. So you can see a lot of them are trailing behind. I think if I was to put it in line, I'd go Bitmain, Micro BT, uh, Canon Avalon, and then maybe below that you have a bunch of other people. So you can see the Nerdax Q right there. Lucky Miner, personally, I don't believe in the Lucky Miner. I think what they actually did with the Lucky Miner was rip all the BitAx open source and actually close source it and then sell them. But as you go down, you can see that there's a few BitAxes put in there. But the main three that you see across the board is going to be MicroBT, Bitmain, and the Canon Avalon miners. So those are the three main places that we're probably gonna get chips from if they wanted to migrate over to a different chip designer. And then it brings into question kind of if we need more chip designers or more chip manufacturers. If you only have three, but one of them being Bitmain is very, very big in the scene, it kind of pushes out the rest of them. Not a lot of people can actually keep up with Bitmain and that's mainly the reason that they've stayed on top for so long. So we're definitely gonna see a migration. I think the next step will be Micro BT or Canon Avalon. I know Canon are already making those smaller miners, so they've kind of cornered the market on that. And they have their own manufacturing process for their own chips. But MicroBT might be the next one because they do produce bigger miners like the M66S. Now, this actually brings us on to the next part of the video, which is other chips that we could go for. So in the past couple of months, Brains has actually been producing their own chip which would make it very, very big for the mining community and especially the BitAx open source community if you could establish a supply chain of these chips from brains for them to basically sell single chips outwards to you. This would definitely cut down that supply chain and cut down the bottleneck in it because then anyone can go and buy a singular chip and make the BitAx and put that into there. So it says here, this came out in February, the Brains ASIC test chip is here. We're considering potential partners or investors who share our mission to decentralize mining hardware. Obviously, with the open source nature of BitAx and the other miners that are out there, this kind of aligns with the same message and story for the BitAx. So they are looking for investors. I don't know if anyone wants to invest in them, but you can just see here a basic chip. It does look a little bit smaller down what Bitmain are working with, but this is obviously a test. And it'll be interesting to see kind of what the hash rate can be pulled on this chip. I would say anything that's under maybe 500 giga hash, that's gonna be a big problem to kind of get people to buy into it. Obviously depending on efficiency, but mainly you want one chip to, I'd say at least be comparable to the Supra 
which would say 700 giga hash would be a good figure to kind of aim for if you wanted people to start using these in solo lottery miners. And then you can see here, they're doing some more testing. So this was in March 17th of 2025. So they have the chip in there. This is obviously a heat sink kind of clamping it in place. As I did say, it does look a little bit smaller. I'm assuming they're gonna put a fan on top and this is just a board so you can plug fans in here. I don't think this is obviously the finished product. This is just them testing the board for hash rates. And I'm sure they're gonna come out with maybe a paper, just a bunch of data listing out kind of what they can produce on these ships. There is the silicon lottery that comes into play. I don't know how big their manufacturing of these chips are. So I don't actually know how many they've produced as of yet, but this is definitely good news for the whole community just because Brains aligns a lot with open sourcing hardware and decentralizing that hash rate on the network. And then lastly, we have a, another option for a chip, which I believe Scott has talked about. And this is the Intel block scale ASIC. So they actually tried to make one Intel. They tried to make cryptocurrency miners, as you can see here, but they actually scrapped it. However, they did actually produce a chip and I believe it's in the hands of Jack Dorsey's company currently. So they've produced about a million of these chips and they can do up to 580 giga hash. I'd say comparable to maybe an ultra or a max in terms of the bit axe. So I believe that this came out in 2023 or 2022 in kind of the bear run that was going on. That's probably why they scrapped it was because of that. But it says here, building years of experience, optimized hashing function, delivers the block scale ASIC, SHA-256, hardware accelerator for blockchain proof of work consensus. It just goes down to say, the demand and environment for cryptocurrency mining, each ASIC has built in temperature and voltage sensor capabilities. So they did get very far in terms of actually producing these if they have a million of them. It does say up to 580 giga hash, but we know that you can kind of push chips a little bit further. If you have it, you know, on a single board, you can get those temperatures down and really overclock it a little bit more. Power consumption is, that's a very big range actually, 4.8 to 22.7, but the power efficiency isn't great. It's only 26 joules per terahash. So if you were to compare it, you could see that it's right down here with maybe an S19 or if we go here, yeah, S19 Pro++ plus plus or an S19 Pro+. Plus. So that's kind of how the power efficiency looks for one of those. So as I said, that's kind of where the bottlenecks fall in terms of the open source and the hardware. And I think in the future, we're gonna see it kind of trickle down into micro BT, maybe Canon Avalon, maybe the Intel block ASIC that we see here, or even Brains when they produce their new chip. We'll have to see what the giga hash is on that, or if maybe they're up to one tera hash already. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on how you see this going in the future. Make sure you like the video and subscribe for more content like this.